No peace without Christ. The Apostle Paul, he explains in Romans 8 verse 5, he says that people who are focused on their own life based on the flesh, meaning on their sinful nature, that they will are led to death. What does that mean? It means that they are spiritually dead, eternally damned. Now, Christians, Christians who are spiritually minded, they have a goal to obey God. They have life. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on things of the flesh. For those who live according to the Spirit, set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the minds on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. Believers, they have peace with God. Unbelievers, they do not have peace with God. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Unbelievers are opposed to God. They hate God. They don't want anything to do with God. They don't want His ways. Hmm. What about unbelievers who do some good things? Well, their good deeds. What's behind them? Their motives. You know, what's their purpose? It's not to glorify God. Why? Because they have a heart of flesh. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. That's an ugly picture. An ugly picture of what our minds look like before we trusted Christ for salvation. Before, we wanted people to look at us. We were proud. We rejected God's ways. That ugly picture, it helps us to understand clearly what Paul means when he says that those who have spiritual minds have peace with God. They do not oppose God. In fact, they have friendship with God. They love God. We who are in Christ, we are willing to obey the law. Not for salvation, no. Why are we willing to obey the law? The reason is because the law shows us what God's character looks like. We fall in love with God. Also, the law leads us to do the right things. We love the law. Those who are unbelievers, they don't like the law, they hate God. What's the difference? For the believer, the Holy Spirit has done the work to place us in Christ, them. We are able to have the desire to want to please God. We can choose the right thing to do, the thing that God wants. It's clear. It's clear that our motive is right. Well, what's that? It's love for God. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. The unbeliever does not love the Lord, and they are not children of God. Now let's apply this to our Christian life. Christians, they can become overly concerned when they have a goal to obey God and become holy. Well, how? Well, they struggle falling into sin again and again and again. They need to be careful not to forget to have joy. Why? Because they're not enemies of God anymore. You need to often remember that you are not facing condemnation anymore from God. Even though you will fall into sin and fail to keep God's law sometimes, yes. But God, He has brought you into peace with Himself. Often, we believe, we know. We know that we have peace with God. We have grown spiritually and everything is fine, but sometimes we fall into sin or sometimes something's in our mind that we just feel we're not good enough for God and we worry. I should have done these things, but I failed, or I should not have done that and I fell into sin. We feel guilty, but there's a difference. It's a different kind. We feel that we're wrong and that God is looking at us as we are like we're bad. It's a difference. Difference when the Holy Spirit convicts you. Satan is a liar. 
He can put things in our minds that make us feel we're not good enough for God and that God has rejected us. You ever feel that way? Satan, he puts lies in our mind. We need to be careful. If the Holy Spirit convicts you, it's different. It's more gentle when he convicts you. Yes, I've sinned. I'm wrong. You know clearly that you have sinned. You know. But when Satan has put these things in your mind, well, there's a verse about this, that Satan is the accusers of the brethren. He works to put lies into our minds. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. Wow, that verse is clear as Satan. He works day and night, day and night to accuse us. But in the future, one day, Jesus will throw him out. Praise God. When we get to heaven, there will be no more presence of sin, no more lies put into our minds. We will be in the truth. Praise God for eternity. That is our assured hope. Quorum Dio.